It is an age of exploration and conquest. The realms of every race set out by land and by sea to claim the bounty of the wilds. They find not only natural resources of every kind, but the relics of an older age, buried by time. In the realm of Magniland, a goblin king uncovered an ancient helm crafted by the demigod Rivacus. When worn, this helmet bestows many powers. The strength of a giant, the fury of a volcano, and the voice of command. The Goblin King wore the helm of Rivacus and wielded its might to great and terrible ends. His reign did not last, however as a clandestine sect of druids emerged from the nearby forested mountains to assassinate him. The Goblin King retreated again and again, until at last he was surrounded by the raven druids in the woodland. In his final desperate moment, he called up a volcanic eruption. A fiery caldera swallowed him and the dark druids and scorched a large area of the forest. Years and years passed. The mountainous forest regrew even thicker and more fertile than before. Vodapad, the great, 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 great grandson of the Goblin King, has located the place where the helm of Rivacus is said to lie buried. His army has built a fortress around the site and begun to excavate in search of the artifact. The orcs of the Burnt Axe clan have a far different perspective on the matter. These mountains and wooded foothills are their ancestral lands, and all that lie here belongs to them. In fact, their claim runs even deeper, for Rivacus himself is said to have been the grandfather of all orc clans. His mystic helm will not be defiled once again by falling into goblin hands. Zagalmai leads his army of orcs, gnolls, and ogres against Vodapod and his goblins. The defenders are known as the Blade Render Company. They shall not lay claim to the legendary helmet of fire giants. It is Zagalmai who bears the clan name of Burnt Axe. Night is newly fallen, and the Burnt Axe clan has repaired for a final strike against the Blade Render Company. Vodapad, the leader of the Blade Render Company, is talking with the alchemists. They are making the final preparations on their deadliest creation yet, the Firebomb. The men atop the rampart start shouting, The enemy is here! The enemy is here! Waste no time, Vodapad commands the alchemists. You must finish it now. Zagalmai, the leader of the Burnt Axe Clan, has given orders to his warriors and his war chief. As they assault the fortress from the front, he will approach from the shadows and scale the side wall. The horns of battle blare and the approaching host is clearly in sight. The two ballista crews aim their weapons and fire at the orc's catapult. A full assade of arrows from goblin bows fell two of the orcs operating the catapult. Knoll archers on the ground return a volley of their own and take down the hobgoblin at one of the ballistas. 
The ogres push forward the rumbling siege tower and ram. The orcs and gnolls within whoop and snarl in anticipation of the frenzy. Vodapod hurries away from the alchemist's campfire. He takes his longbow in hand and fires over the barricade at the gnolls. He wounds one of them, then draws closer to the tower door, intending to join the Blade Render company on the parapets. Zagalmai slinks from the nearby wooded mountain slope, just out of the glow of the goblins' torches. He comes up to the fortress wall and tosses up his grappling hook. The orcs within the siege tower shove out their ladder onto the fortress rampart. Their battle cries and howling fill the night air. They overwhelm one of the hobgoblins and send her careening off the wall walk. An orc archer sprints over to aid the one who remains at the catapult. They aim the great weapon at the fortress. The hobgoblin captain, the Blade Render Company, begins issuing commands of tactics and morale. Show these heathen brutes no mercy. Tonight the Goblin King claims his vengeance. The ballista crews reload, aim at the catapult, and fire. Swords and axes crash against one another all along the rampart. An orc shrieks as a goblin hacks through his ankle from behind with a scimitar. An archer takes a shot by the guidance of the hobgoblin captain and pierces a second orc through the face. The knoll archers on the ground fire at the defenders on the wall above, whilst those in the siege tower come pouring out after their orc allies. The gnolls rush out onto the parapet, yowling like demons. <laughs> Their spears and snapping jaws explode into a frenzy. A burly bugbear collapses with spears in his gut and hyena-like fangs tearing open his throat. The first ogre finishes pushing the ram up to the tower's outer wall. He prepares to help his allies within batter the structure. The second ogre approaches the broken wall and hurls a javelin at the hobgoblins defending the barricade. The large javelin breaks against the face of the barricade. The orc warchief comes from the siege tower and howls a terrible battle cry that further emboldens his allies. These goblins come will not lay their hands upon the helm of Ryabakus. Consume them in the slaughter! The Orcus chieftain chops a goblin in half. His great axe does not stop and it then lops off the head of a second goblin. Vodapod flings open the tower door and rushes up the stairs. He reaches the edge of the tower top and sees the orcish ram below. He sends arrows streaming towards the ogre. Zagalmai chants, calling to himself a wind spirit. He then begins climbing his rope. Zagalmai reaches the top of the fortress wall and lurks in the darkness whilst affixing his grapnel to the other side of the wall walk. The battering ram team heaves the iron shod log against the fortress wall. The ogre is wounded by Vodapod's arrows, but he still adds his power into the ram from behind.
Wall stones crack and split. Another such hit will surely break open the tower. The catapult team has finally readied itself sufficiently, and it looses a heavy stone at the ballista. The catapult stone comes crashing down from above. It smashes the ballista to splinters and knocks its team to the ground. The force is so great that it tears a hole through the top of the tower. Up on the parapet, two goblins fall under the onslaught of orcish axes. The hobgoblin captain sees his comrades falling and goes running across the walkway. He leaps over the broken gap toward his allies. His commands bring aid to his goblin kin all around him. The goblin alchemists nearly have their firebomb prepared. They are putting the finishing touches on sealing its container. The Blade Render Company continue to defend their fortress. They overwhelm an orc, which goes down, roaring against a rain of blades. Arrows fly at the ogre, which is using the ram carriage for cover. One shaft clips him. The hobgoblins at the barricade send a volley at the ogre nearing them. A group of gnolls skewer a goblin and fling its corpse over the wall. The knoll archers fire at the defenders and land some light wounds. The first ogre continues to assist the ram crew whilst using the carriage for cover. The other one, however, goes charging fearlessly against the barricade. His great club comes down from above and smashes in the helmet of a hobgoblin sending him flying onto the ground. The orc war chief falls upon the last remaining ballista crewmen. His great axe cleaves open the hobgoblin's chest, and he falls in a fountain of blood. The war chief then shoves his way through the ranks to meet the approaching hobgoblin captain on the wall walk. Vodapod is concerned about the battering ram crew trying to smash through the tower wall. He fires once again at the ogre. From above, the hobgoblin monk's arrows come streaming down into the ogre's skull. The brute topples over with a horrible grunt. Vodapod then leaps from the tower, lands with supernatural grace, and readies to aid his allies against the second ogre. Zagalmai slips unnoticed down the other side of the fortress wall. In the shadows of tents and trees, he sneaks up on the two goblin alchemists who are working frantically on some object. The battering ram team again heaves its great chained log, this time unaided by the ogre. The ram smashes through the wall of the tower. Orcs and gnolls prepare to move through the rubble and into the tower. The catapult crew loads another heavy stone. The orcs up on the wall hurl javelins at their enemies, though the shots are difficult to make. They wound a single goblin. The hobgoblin captain draws his longsword. He shouts in the face of the orc war chief, Barbarian maggots, we shall rend your flesh, and the ravens will pick your skulls clean! With the aid of his adjacent goblin allies, the captain lands a well-placed blow, though the orc chieftain does not flinch. 
The Blade Render Company fires arrows at the Orc War Chief and the Ogre. One archer also manages to clip a member of the Orc's catapult crew. The Knoll archers then reposition behind the ram carriage. They fire at the hobgoblin captain up on the parapet. Those within melee range continue to clash against the goblins. The blade render captain takes only a glancing shot, which his half plate largely repels. Then a goblin falls with a hyena man's spear in his throat. The ogre is enraged, having been pricked by the hobgoblin's arrows. He swings his massive great club. But he strikes only the heavy barricade. The burnt axe's war chief assaults the hobgoblin captain. The orc's axe devastates the hobgoblin captain. He who had been so full of fervor now lies on the floor, unconscious and pooling blood from deep gashes. You're the one who shall be brethren to maggots now. Vodapod hears the shouts from above that the enemy has broken through the tower wall and that the captain has fallen. He sees his comrades ahead, trying to hold off the ogre at the barricade. He then looks to the alchemists, sensing that they are the Blade Render Company's hope for victory. Vodapad sees his dread foe, Zagalmai, the leader of the Burnt Axe clan, that deadly stalker in shadows. The monk flies ahead on steps of wind. Blade in hand, he launches an attack against the enemy. Channeling key through his straight sword, Vodapod stuns the ranger. With blade and fist, the monk knocks the orc ranger momentarily senseless. The catapult crew work at aiming their weapon, this time at the goblin archers on the tower top. The team from the battering ram carriage tears their way into the tower and marches up the stairs, growling as they go. The frontmost orc throws open the trap door at the top. On the other side, the orcs atop the parapet push forwards a ways. Two of them split a goblin into chunks with their axes. The goblin alchemists are startled by the near ambush of Zagalmai. They frantically put the finishing touches onto the firebomb. Glexi! Glexi, it's done! It's ready! We did it, Shax. Now what do I do? Throw it up there! There? Yeah, right there. Kill them all! You do it! No! You do it! The defenders at the barricade slash at the enraged ogre with their long swords, all the while trying to utilize the reinforced wall for cover. The ogre sustains a few cuts, but is still battering at the blockade. A lone goblin named Cugs stares up at the horde of snarling orcs and yowling gnolls. He is the last one standing his post. He feels a stinking warm liquid run down his leg. He drops his axe and flees to the wall. The smoothly fitted wall stones are difficult to grip. Cugs falls 25 feet to the ground. Atop the tower, the defenders wound the orc, trying to open the way for his team. 
The archers launch another volley at the catapult crew, landing another indirect hit. The gnolls atop the wall draw their longbows and launch arrows at the hobgoblins, defending the barricade. One of them takes a near-deadly wound. The gnolls on the ground fire a volley at the goblin archers, taking one of them down. They then move through the ram carriage and into the tower. The ogre roars and swings its mighty club. The sounds of bones crunching rings out over the clamor of battle. The orc war chief takes a spear in hand and hurls it at the wounded hobgoblin below. The spear punctures through the hobgoblin soldier, who falls to the ground in a stream of red. The orc war chief then grabs one of the knoll's spears and throws it. The spear strikes at an ineffective angle and bounces off the hobgoblin's mail. Vodapad the Kinsei focuses onto his foe, and the battle around him seems to grow distant and quiet. His blade slashes through a gap in the orc's half plate. He then follows through with a series of lightning fast martial arts strikes. Vodapad shouts to the goblin alchemists, Go! Burn them from the rampart! Zagalmai is battered and bleeding, but not quite defeated. He shouts, invoking again the wind spirit. He then draws twin battle axes engraved with flame emblems through their fire-blackened halves. After his barrage, the orc leader sprints off with the agility of a zephyr into the darkness, outside the illumination of any torch or campfire. The catapult team is now ready, and they loose another attack. The catapult stone hits a hobgoblin straight on his head, pounding him into a crumpled mess. The ram team struggles to get through the trapdoor. The defenders above have too advantageous a position. At this, the team decides to head out the tower door and flank the barricade soldiers. Between them and the orcs hurling javelins from the top of the wall, Another hobgoblin falls dead to the ground, leaving only a single one at his post. Go, Grexy! Hurry, whilst there's still a chance! I'm going! I'm going! Grixie the goblin alchemist dashes across the encampment, firebomb in hand. It resembles something akin to an alchemist's fire but he knows it is far more potent. He sees the invaders storming the ramparts, and he sees all his fallen comrades. He remembers all the torments and injuries he's suffered through his entire life for being a big-headed, brainy type. They'll remember me now. They'll love me. And my big brain from this day on! He throws the firebomb onto the parapet above. It explodes in a giant ball of fire. The conflagration consumes most of the invaders nearby. The war chief shields himself with one of his grunts 
avoiding the worst of the blaze. A brutish knoll takes cover behind crenellations and manages to survive. Screams of terror and agony fill the air, mixing with the stench of charred flesh and burnt hair. A surge of morale stirs the Blade Render Company. They take down an orc and wound a knoll. Kug stands up, unable to believe his luck. He thought he was certainly going to perish against the horde of barbarians. And then again from his plummet from the rampart. But in the end, he narrowly escaped. And it was they who died in the fire attack. Wounded, he scampers into a tent nearby. Before he enters, he throws the alchemist a glance and says, I, Grixie, gotta love the smell of burning ox. A knoll breaks from his pack and runs over to the giant boar. The boar grunts and squeals against the unfamiliar creature. The other four knolls come yipping and whooping out of the tower. They spy Grixie and the goblin alchemist by the campfire, along with Vodapod. Grixie sustains light wounds from their spears. The ogre strikes at the remaining barricade soldier. With a wide, arcing swing, the great club bashes the hobgoblin's spine. The orc war chief is overtaken by rage at seeing his men killed by the firebomb. He rushes and attempts a mighty leap, great axe raised. The orc's leap attack does not connect. As the goblin nimbly evades the axe, it kicks broken floor stones through, sending the war chief falling down to the ground. Vodapod knows that the deep stalker is still out there in the darkness, but he refuses to abandon Grixie, who just dealt a devastating blow and possibly turn the tables of the battle. With a combination of blows from his straight sword, hands and feet, Vodapod takes down one of the gnolls. From somewhere in a dark nook of the inner encampment, comes the sound of primal spellcasting. The catapult crew aims for an attack against the top of the tower. The ram team joins the knoll pack and begins surrounding Vodapod. Grixie feels the fear of death biting at him. He draws a flask of acid and throws it at the knoll who already bears a wound. The file shatters against the knoll's shield. Hold your ground, commands Vodapad. Shrax throws an acid flask as well and also fails to strike his target. From the rampart comes a full assate of arrows. They strike down one of the knolls. The two hobgoblins decide to go down and join in melee, and they start making their way. The three remaining members of the Knoll Pack stab at Vodapod with their spears. His agility and parrying blade avoid the worst of the assault, but he still sustains a light wound. The lone Knoll again tries to mount the giant boar. He hops into the saddle. The ogre pushes with all its strength against the barricade. It shoves the blockade wall partway aside, then strides into the interior encampment. The orc warchief stands up, picks up his great axe. In a burst of aggression, he rushes to join the battle against Vodapod and the alchemists.
All hope is lost. The slaughter shall consume you. The halls of my ancestors await me. All that awaits you is the abyss of demons. At that, the monk accepts his fate and channels the last of his key energy into a final assault. Photopod's furious attack seriously wounds the Orcus chieftain. Though he himself is badly hurt, he stands stoic in his finest moment of honor. Zagalmai watches with cold-hearted satisfaction as the monk is being slowly overwhelmed. He again chants a healing invocation. The catapult team launches another hefty stone into the air. The stone soars high, then lands onto the tower top. It cracks the floor somewhat, though does not quite break through. The goblin archers atop the tower hold their ground despite the crashing catapult stone. They loose a volley of arrows at the orc warchief. Two arrows sink into his back. He collapses at Vodapod's feet. Two brave hobgoblins rush into battle with long swords drawn. They slash at the ogre's backside. The gnolls swarm over Vodapod from all sides. He blocks and evades many of their attacks, but one spear catches him in the side. He falls to his knees, weak and fading. Another knoll bites into his upper arm. The knoll boar rider comes charging in and stabs at a hobgoblin. Then the ogre turns to face the attackers that cut him from behind. He bludgeons one of the hobgoblin soldiers and sends him into a broken heap. Zagalmai, deep stalker and leader of the Burnt Axe clan, slinks to the edge of the torchlights. He throws Gristlecross, his X-shaped boomerang made of enchanted steel. Grixie is caught unaware. The bladed boomerang chops through his big skull. He falls dead to the ground. Trax, too, is caught off guard. Gristlecross cuts his side, then returns to its owner. Zagalmai's voice comes from the darkness. The battle is ours, and the helm of Rivokus shall be as well. The goblins make their stand until the end. Shrax hisses, spits, and throws acid at his pursuers. The lone hobgoblin soldier tints his longsword red on the blood of foes. The goblin archers fire volleys of arrows, even as the invaders break onto the tower top. But the situation is hopeless. The catapult shots smash into the fortress without mercy. The gnolls are like a swarm of hungry demons. The ogre and the boar rider are formidable brutes. And deadliest of all, the deep stalker Zagalmai, with his shadowy concealment, magic boomerang, and twin battle axes. Before the night is through, the Burnt Axe clan has taken the fortress. Soon, they shall continue the excavation work that the goblins began, digging down, down, 
into the buried tomb of the helm of Rivacus. Cugs wants to stop running. His legs feel like they are on fire. He looks back over his shoulder for the thousandth time. He wonders if the enemy has found the secret tunnel by now. He wonders if they fell into the pit trap. His mind races with an endless series of anxieties. Daybreak is spreading over the land, and the mountainous forest is changing from blacks and grays into greens, browns, and the warm colors of dawn. Weaponless, without food or water, alone in the rugged wilderness, Cugs the Goblin struggles on in the hope of surviving. <laughs>